I'm John Barker here at the Skull and Mortar Kitchen and today I'm going to show you why you've been cooking your chuck roast wrong this whole time. We're going to cook it just like a brisket. Guys, I'm excited. This is gonna be a quick and easy cook. It's a super simple method because not everybody is looking for the craziest, most intense, most advanced recipe. Andy, don't be a bag, all right? Sometimes we just make basic stuff because it's good and it's fun. Holler at your boy. Let's get into it right now. first off the marbling in this chuck roast is amazing um, it's not the the biggest chuck roast in the world but the quality of this chuck roast top-notch now you might have a bigger chuck roast and that's obviously going to change your cooking time here right but I'm gonna tell you the cooking time for this one but we're gonna go mostly off internal temperature here and look for tenderness here later so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our God Save the Queen rub from skull and mortar and we're gonna give it a nice coating Again, this is a big piece of meat, so you don't have to worry too much about over seasoning it as long as you have some level of common sense. But I do want a good bark, so I'm not playing around. Now we're gonna go ahead and push this in. You're not actually gonna rub it. We just wanna kinda push it so we know that it's gonna stick. I don't like to use binder really. You don't really need to use a binder if you get your rub game right because most rubs are gonna pull out moisture. Flip it back over. First off, that looks freaking phenomenal, right? Now, normally I would use my rub for these videos, the skull and mortar rub, but uh, I'm sold out thanks to you guys. So I appreciate you guys, I love you guys. Instead, we're gonna use the barbecue rub. This comes from Malcolm Reed at Killer Hawks. Uh, check him out at How to Barbecue Right. I'm sure you already know who he is. Um, he's basically the godfather of YouTube, right? Barbecue, that is. Wanna make sure we get all our sides. All right guys, that's literally all the prep work we need to do to get this thing right. Now I am gonna take my meter probe. Uh, you can find the link for this down below. I'm gonna run it right through the, the side here, as deep into the middle as I can. That right there should give me a pretty accurate temperature. Cause I like to put uh, as much meat as I can as a pan, especially a brisket, because I like to catch those juices. If you don't want to catch the juices, don't do it, I guess. But uh, it's going to save you a lot of mess to clean up later. And it's going to blast your meats full of flavor, my guys. So trust me on this one. Put it in the pan. I know what I'm talking about sometimes, and this is one of those times. So now we're going to get this on the smoker. We're going to make it happen. 225 degrees, and we're going to let it roll till it gets to about 165. Guys, it's been about three hours now and we have our chuck roast exactly where we want it. We have some nice color to it. We have some nice bark building on it, but now it is time to wrap it up and get as much moisture and flavor packed into this as possible. All right, guys, here's the secret. We're gonna take a little bit of Campbell's French onion soup, which apparently I'm not gonna maneuver very well at all. We're just gonna put a little bit in there, kind of spread it out. Now you don't want to overfill it too much because we don't want to uh, prevent any bark from building up here, but we do want to get that moisture in there and we're gonna mix that with a little Lowry steak and chop. Haters wanna hate, man, put it in there. It'll taste great. Basically just drop the hottest rap track in the history of barbecue right then and right there. So I think we got plenty of moisture in there. We're gonna be able to keep our uh, sides and top miraculous, wait. No, not miraculous, meticulous. We're gonna keep them looking fantastic, glorious, if you will, wonderful. We could put all kinds of adjectives on there. And now it's time that we break out the foil. And we're just gonna do a standard wrap on this. Uh, and if you're highly skilled at this like me, you'll have this gigantic flap of foil over here that makes no sense whatsoever. So just go ahead and wad that up. That's something only you'll see from a true professional, uh, a waste of materials 
and a lack of measuring skill. So holla at your boy. We're gonna get this back on our smoker. We're gonna keep the temperature at 225. At the rate it's going, I think it's gonna be another two, two and a half hours and we are gonna get this to a temperature of 205. And because I did forget to say it earlier, I am using a pecan, pecan, who really knows how it's pronounced wood. Guys, we have our chuck roast out of the smoker. Again, look at this thing, it looks amazing. Now what we did with this is we cooked it at 225 degrees until we wrapped it at 165 degrees. Then I did go ahead and bump the temperature up to 250 and we let it ride out until the internal was at 205 degrees. So let's cut into this thing and let's see what's really going on. I did kind of lose the grain in this, so we might have to adjust our cuts here. Let's find out. So you can definitely see we got good smoke penetration in here. This meat is so tender. It's damn near falling apart. So we're pushing it right to the edge of overcooking it, uh, maybe even. So let's uh, see what this is all about. You guys, I cannot wait to get a bite of this. Look at this. Let's test this out. Look at that. Oh, perfect. It's got a nice pull to it, but again, boom, just like a brisket, we can pull it right apart, right? Looking fantastic. Let's check out a bend test. Let me grab a good piece here for bend test. I mean, it fits the bend test just like a uh, just like brisket does. It's got a great bend going to it. So, all right, man. The only thing left to do is how close to a brisket does it taste? Oh, honestly, wow. Honestly, guys, this is pretty close. Guys, I can jive with this, man. We took a chuck roast. And we basically cooked it to be a brisket. The color's not quite the same. It's a little bit darker, but it's still got a good smoke ring. It still passes the bend test, still passes the pull test. Most importantly, it passes the taste test. This is phenomenal, my friends. If you're looking for a cheaper cut of meat, if you don't want to buy a big ass giant brisket, because God knows they're so expensive right now, I got this chuck roast for $20 instead of 80 or 100 or 120, sometimes even more than that. So this is plenty to feed a family, probably um, maybe even like a little party, a little get together. So try it out, man. It's pretty fire. Guys, if you like this video, smash that like button, smash the subscribe button. There's no rules in cooking, man. Make a freaking chuck roast like a brisket. Do whatever it is that you gotta do. Get wild with it, my friends. I hope I'll see you next week with a brand new video. I'll be here, hopefully you will be. Who knows, right? Let's make it happen.